Hi students! This video will be an introductory demo to the Wireshark Packet Analyzer. Wireshark is a free program that lets you view all the packets that your computer is sending and receiving on the network. It can be very useful both as a debugging tool if you want to know exactly what your network is doing, but also as a program that's fun to play around with and experiment with. Uh, and you'll probably learn a thing or two if you do. So you're welcome to either sit back and watch, uh, or I encourage you to first go to the Wireshark website at wireshark.org uh, so you can download the program and follow along. Now, once you've uh, hit the download button here and chosen the version for your operating system, then you're ready to get started. So this is what Wireshark looks like when you first open it up. The first thing you'll see is a list of all of the network interfaces on your computer. Now, you have to choose which interface you want to Wireshark to capture packets on. For most of you, this will either be uh, your Ethernet connection, uh, if you're using a desktop like mine, or if you're using a laptop, uh, it'll probably be your Wi-Fi adapter. So I'm going to double click uh, on my Ethernet adapter, and once I do, Wireshark will start capturing packets. So here we go. All right, now immediately uh, we'll start seeing a whole bunch of packets that my computer's sending and receiving. I see some DNS packets in here, some TCP, some UDP, a whole bunch is going on. Uh, but let's start with something simpler. How about a ping packet? Now, as we discussed in class, ping packets are a type of internet control message, or part of the ICMP protocol. So if we want, we can tell Wireshark to only show us packets that are ICMP packets. And to do that, uh, you can click on this display filter bar, type in ICMP, and hit enter. And now I'll start the capture. Then I'll go over to my terminal, and let's make a ping request to google.com. So we'll, we sent uh, four requests, and now we're done. Let's see what Wireshark found. So first, on the top part of the screen, Wireshark shows you a list of all the packets it's seeing and gives you some brief info about them. So the first thing you might notice is that we have a series of four ping requests that were sent and four replies that we received. Now over here, Wireshark will show us the source and the destination IPs for each of these packets. So for instance, this 192.168.0.106 address, that must be my computer. And google.com is the destination, of course. Now, perhaps even more interesting is the information that Wireshark gives you down here. So we have these four lines down here. And each of them corresponds to one of the layers of the internet. And each of the layers is represented by a header that is contained on that packet. So when Wireshark uh, intercepts a packet, it looks at all of the headers on that packet so that you get complete information about the packet at every step of the network stack. So for instance, this first line here, frame 58, that corresponds to the physical layer header, the actual physical packet that was transmitted along the wire. Then the second line is layer two, the ethernet layer. And I can double click on each of these to open them up and get more info. So here we have a source address, which is a MAC address in this case, that says ASUS. And that's the uh, manufacturer of my computer's motherboard, I think. And then the destination is TP-Link. And that's the uh, manufacturer of my router. Then we can go in and look at the IP layer, layer three. And Wireshark gives us a list of all of the fields in the layer three header. There's a whole bunch here, um, but maybe something to note is that the protocol field is set to ICMP. And then finally, this packet has an ICMP header on it uh, that contains information about the ping request. So that's a brief intro to some of the info Wireshark gives you as you're capturing packets. So a ping request was pretty simple. Now let's try something more interesting, like a request to a web page. So we're going to make a request to one of my favorite pages on the internet, the very last page on the internet. I love this website just because of how terse it is. 
you know, there's not a lot of fancy graphics or JavaScript going on here. It's just some very simple HTML. And if we actually look at the source code for the page, uh, we can confirm that it's just some very simple HTML. So let's see what happens if we make a request to this page. I'm going to move Wireshark over here and my browser over here. Now in Wireshark, I'll now add a filter uh, for HTTP packets. And then up here in the left corner, um, we have some handy buttons for starting, stopping, and restarting a capture. So I'll go ahead and hit start. And now that our capture is going, I'll refresh the page. All right, Wireshark found a few packets. I'll go ahead and stop the capture now. So here we can see all the HTTP requests and replies that my computer got. So we made one to lastpage.html and one to favicon.ico. Uh, that's this little icon that shows up in the tab. So if we click on this get request um, to last page, um, actually, let's click on the reply from the server. So this, this OK uh, with the data that we wanted. Now, if we go down here and look at our layers and we click on line-based text data, then down here at the bottom, I didn't explain this yet, uh, but this shows the actual bytes of the packet uh, and what their encoding means. So here we can see that the actual HTML of that website is just directly coded inside the packet that was sent. Now, we can look at not only the HTTP requests that were sent, uh, but also the entire TCP connections that were used to send these requests. Now, to do that, I'll right click on one of these packets, and then I'll go down to follow, and then hit TCP stream. Now Wireshark pops up a box that shows all of the data that was sent and received inside a, this single TCP connection, uh, where everything in red is what I sent, and everything in blue is what I received. So if we look in here, we can see that I made a get request to the HTML, and a get request to the favicon inside a single HTTP connection. So that means that this connection must have been persistent. We used a single TCP connection for multiple HTTP requests. Now, if I close out of this window and go back to Wireshark, now Wireshark is filtering on this single TCP stream. And we can see all the packets that were sent and received inside that stream. So now we notice that there is a handshake that starts up, uh, our syn synac ack, and then we make the get requests. Uh, there's some acknowledgments that we send to the server. And then finally, uh, there is our finac ack teardown at the end uh, to terminate the connection. One other topic we covered a lot this semester was TCP congestion control. So for the last part of this video, I'm going to show you some of the powerful information that Wireshark provides you to let you analyze the congestion control working on your TCP connections. Now for this last part of the demo, I'm going to be running an upload speed test and capturing all the packets meanwhile. So let's fire up Wireshark, and I'm going to start a one megabyte upload test. All right, the results are in, and I have a 5.5 megabit per second upload speed. That's not too shabby, I guess. And I've already got ahead and stopped the capture, uh, so let's take a look at our speed test. Now, the direction we care about as the packets that were sent from my computer to the server, because this was an upload test. So to analyze this connection, I'm first going to click on one of the packets that I sent. And then I'm going to go up to statistics, go down to TCP stream graphs, and open a time sequence. And Wireshark is going to give me a graph of this TCP connection. Now this graph shows us on the y-axis the sequence numbers of the packets that I sent. And on the x-axis, we have time. So these show all the sequence numbers that I sent throughout the connection. Now, this graph is a little different than the ones you've seen in lecture and discussion, where normally we refer to um, the window size of the connection uh, on the y-axis. But as you'll see, this graph is very similar and gives us all the information we need to analyze the connection. 
Now, as a refresher, there are three states uh, in TCP connections. There's the states where you are starting off your sending rate slowly, but then increasing exponentially very quickly, and that is called slow start. And then there are the congestion avoidance uh, states here and here, where TCP is sort of standing at a stable rate and increasing its rate slowly. Um, and then there are uh, the locations where TCP detects some kind of dropped packet. Uh, and that happens uh, either through the detection of three duplicate acts here and here, uh, or if we hit a timeout. And in particular, if we detect three duplicate acts, then we'll enter what's called the fast recovery state. And so now let's see, given this graph, if we can find all three of those states in our connection. Now, first, maybe the easiest portions are these long stretches of sequence numbers here, as well as here, that look to be increasing at mostly a stable linear rate. And so for these sections, this is probably our congestion avoidance state where TCP spends most of its time. Now, what about fast recovery? So for fast recovery, we know that TCP will have detected the, the will have detected three duplicate acknowledgments. And when it does that, then what it will do is it will retransmit that one packet that it's getting all these duplicate acts for because hopefully we only lost just that one packet that we're getting all the dupe acts for, but everything else is going through. So in this graph, we should look for somewhere where we retransmitted a single packet. And that would occur whenever our line here drops to an earlier sequence number. And one point that stands out to me is this packet right here. We were sending, uh, increasing sequence numbers at a normal rate, and then suddenly our line drops and we sent a packet with a much earlier sequence number. This looks like a sign of potential fast recovery. Now let's click on this packet and see what Wireshark thinks. So here in the Wireshark window, we can see that there was a period when TCP was acting pretty normally. Um, this window full means that we sent all of the packets in our window. So TCP is going well. We're taking advantage of uh, our full window size. That's good. And then all of a sudden, we start receiving all of these duplicate acts from the server. And they all have the same acknowledgement number, this 1383037. And so notice that after roughly the third duplicate act, TCP will realize, oh, that, pack, that, that packet with that sequence number probably got dropped. And so that will trigger TCP to resend just that packet. And you can see that um, right here, TCP sends uh, a packet that Wireshark has actually flagged as a fast retransmitted packet. So Wireshark is doing a, a lot of analysis on the sequence numbers and the acknowledgments of your TCP connections and it will label packets, whether they're duplicate acts or fast retransmits, uh, to help you debug connections. And this fast retransmitted packet, if we look at its sequence number, it exactly matches the duplicate acknowledgments that we're getting. Now, this came after the fourth duplicate acknowledgement except uh, instead of the third, but I'm gonna assume that was something to do with Wireshark lagging. You should know that after the third duplicate act, that triggers TCP uh, to retransmit that packet. So we found fast recovery in our connection. Now, what about slow start? Well, slow start will occur whenever uh, we hit a timeout where no packets are being sent for a long time and it'll look like a curve. And this portion of the graph stands out to me as potential slow start because there's a long period of time here where we're not sending any packets at all. And then all of a sudden we have this sending that looks like a curve. So let's zoom in to this portion of the graph and see what's going on. I'll zoom in even further. And here we can see 
that at this point, TCP sends one packet. And then we wait, and then TCP sends two, and then four packets, and then eight, and then 16. So our sending rate starts off slow here, but it's increasing exponentially. And so that is a very good sign that we have entered the slow start state in TCP. So to mark this graph, we managed to find all three states of TCP in this connection. We had the big phases of congestion avoidance. And then there was this period where we entered fast recovery and retransmitted a single packet. And then there was a slow start phase uh, where we dropped back down due to a timeout uh, and started sending slowly, but then increased our sending rate rapidly. And that concludes our demo. There's a lot more I could say about Wireshark, but I'll let you discover the rest. Thanks for watching and have fun.